Here's why you should care about this movie. Because in a world where, where con- in, in, in a crazy world, which is too woke on one side and too anti-woke on the other side, there's all this madness about should James Bond be a woman? Should, well, if that's the case, then let's cast Black Panther as a white guy. And let's go really crazy with, with gender swapping and race swapping with all sorts of castings. And at the core of it all, At the core of it all, there remains the centralists like myself who are saying, well, why can't James Bond stay a man? Why can't Black Panther stay black? Why can't we write really cool kick-ass roles or otherwise for women? And why can't we write really cool kick-ass or otherwise roles for those who are less represented in Hollywood? As well as maintaining the lineage and the, the lineage and history of making really good white films. Why can't we have all of that? Because there's certainly space for all that. Enter Duchess. Duchess kicks ass, man. It's from one of my favorite directors out there, Neil Marshall, the guy who made Dog Soldiers, one of my favorite cult movies, the guy who made The Descent. This is a director who historically has got pedigree writing strong women in his movies and that is no exception here charlotte kirk who i'll be interviewing later this uh, who, who will appear on interview with me later this week so stay tuned to the channel for that stars in this brilliant role about this kind of small time pickpocketer come badass you know what it's like this movie took all of Neil Marshall's history of writing strong female characters invited man on fire to the party and said, let's put it all in a melting pot, sprinkle in a load of charm, sprinkle in a load of violence, a lot of gore, a lot of kick-ass swearing, and some fun, witty dialogue, and let's see what comes out. And Duchess came out. (laughs) As I said, Duchess kicks ass, and I didn't expect it. I mean, that's not fair. Of course, I expected it to with Neil Marshall as director, like Charlotte Kirk, who I've seen before in Bermondsey Tales, which I reviewed on the channel, to see her in this capacity, I was like, yeah, man, this this is the sort of stuff we need for women in the in the film industry. Strong lead roles where men are not subservient to them. So it's not a kind of gender politics thing where we're pushing men down for the sake of women, but where women are integrated completely seamlessly and naturally into A movie which, though it has some very obvious budget constraints, still has some serious actors behind it. You know, the likes of Sean Pertwee's in here. Love Sean Pertwee. Um, Just everyone works. So Charlotte Kirk's character, Scarlett, she comes into contact with this diamond runner. She gets into that world. Some bad stuff happens to him, and she goes on a revenge spree, the likes of which legitimately... I have not seen since Man on Fire. And I'm not going to talk more about it because I'm hoping you're feeling the emotion. What I'm telling you is you've got one of the GOAT directors of the 21st century, a revelation of a female lead, a brilliantly strong ensemble cast, a, a, a super cool script, and a clear inspiration from one of the great modern movies in Man on Fire. What more do you want? <laughs> you must see this film. And please, for the love of God, don't be one of those who are I'll wait to see it until streaming. No, go and see this film in the cinema. I, I believe it's getting a limited time run. Please go and seek it out. Because that boring, again, sound but of, oh, well, there's no original movies being made anymore. Here's an original movie. Oh, but you know, there's not enough representation in Hollywood. Here's representation. This movie ticks all the right boxes, and to boot, it's really good. Like, it has some obvious constraints. The constraints are there's an obvious budget, there's some ropey editing decisions being made with things like transitions, and the plot in the second act in terms of, well, I wonder who betrays who, is so glaringly obvious that it's bordering on the offensive. And I can't stress that enough. It is bordering on the offensive how obvious the plot is in Act 2. But it's a means to an end. It's set up in Act 1, and the comeuppances in Act 3 are worth the, the slog of a second act. And 
listen, if you can look past the fact that it doesn't have a triple A budget behind it, it's hard to not like this film. <laughs> like, it kicks ass. <laughs> so what are my feelings on it? As you've just said, it kicks ass. Um, Final score for Duchess. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. It came out of absolutely nowhere. It surprised me. Charlotte Kirk is one of my standouts for this year, given that we've had Bermondsey Tales, given that we've got this now. And I believe there's some interesting, is it an erotic thriller to look forward to with her in the coming uh, in the coming months? So, so much cool stuff coming from here. This is a movie for all the reasons I've said in this review that you need to go and support. Show your love for some original cinema. And with all that said, I'm going to flip it over to you guys by asking you to subscribe. Hit the other video that you can watch up here. Stay tuned to the channel for lots of reviews and interviews coming over the coming days. And I'll see you all very soon right here on the Silver Screen Dudes. Bye for now.